James Alfred Pierce December 14, 1805 to December 20, 1862, was an American politician. He was a member of the U.S. House of Representatives, representing the 2nd District of Maryland from 1835 to 1839 and 1841 to 1843. He later served as a U.S. Senator from Maryland from 1843 until his death in 1862. Biography Early life Pierce was in born Alexandria, Virginia, the son of Gideon Pierce and Julia Dick, and the grandson of Elisha C. Dick. When he turned four years old, his mother died, his father moved to Louisiana to become a sugar planter, leaving his son in Alexandria to the care of grandparents. Pierce attended a private academy in Alexandria and entered the College of New Jersey now Princeton University in 1819. He graduated in 1822 at the age of 17 with honors and started studying law in Baltimore under Judge John Glenn and attorney David Hoffman an American legal ethics pioneer and author of 50 resolutions in regard to professional deportment there was a requirement for aspiring jurists set by the Maryland legislature for at least three years of legal studies under the guidance of practicing lawyers in 1831 it was lowered to two years. Ahead of time, in 1824, Pierce passed exams and was admitted to the Maryland Bar, commencing practice in Cambridge, Maryland for a year. In 1825, Pierce moved with his father in Louisiana, and briefly engaged in sugar planting business, then he returned to Kent County, Maryland, in 1828, where he started the practice of law in Chestertown. <laughs> Family life In 1829, Pierce married Martha J. Laird. They were raising three children in Chestertown, Maryland until 1845, when Martha died. In 1847, Pierce remarried, his new wife became Matilda Cox Ringgold, they had one child. His son, James Alfred Pierce Jr., became a judge for the Maryland Court of Appeals. Political career From 1831 until 1835, Pierce was a member of the Maryland House of Delegates. He was elected as a Whig to the 24th and 25th Congresses, serving from March 4, 1835 until March 3, 1839, but was an unsuccessful candidate for re-election in 1838 to the 26th Congress, losing to Philip Thomas. He was again elected to Congress in 1840, and served one term from March 4, 1841, until March 3, 1843. Pierce was again elected as a Whig to the United States Senate in 1843, and was re-elected in 1849, 1855, and 1861, the last time as a Democrat, and served from March 4, 1843, until his death in 1862. In the Senate, Pierce served for 19 years as chairman of the Committee on the Library 29th through 37th Congresses. He also served in 1861 for two months as chairman of the Committee on Finance. In 1847-1862, he served as a member of the Executive Committee of the Regents of the Smithsonian Institution. He was involved with the Coast Survey, which is among the U.S. governmental oldest scientific organizations, and the United States Botanic Garden. In the U.S. Senate, Pierce became known as an erudite and pragmatist. In 1850, he developed the so-called Pierce Plan, a part of Compromise of 1850. The Pierce Plan provided a solution for the boundary dispute between Texas and the federal government. Pierce wrote a bill that granted Texas $10 million in compensation for agreeing with the state borders charted by the government. After being approved by Congress, the bill was signed by President Millard Fillmore. In 1850, President Fillmore offered Pierce, first, to become a judge of the United States District Court for the District of Maryland, and then Secretary of the Interior. Pierce chose to stay in the Senate. Political polarization caused by the issues of nativism, prohibition, and anti slavery fragmented in 1852 the Whig Party, and in 1856, Pierce joined the Democratic Party and supported James Buchanan's nomination for presidency. During the sectional crisis, Pierce stood against the dissolution of the Union. However, he was hesitant to discuss the slavery issue being a slaveholder himself. 
After the Civil War broke out, he did not resign. In March 1862, he appeared in the Senate for the last time. Pierce died in Chestertown on December 20, 1862, and is interred in New Chester Cemetery. His deathbed from the Hinson Ringgold House was preserved and now exhibited in the historic Geddes Piper House c. 1770 in Chestertown, Maryland. See also List of United States Congress members who died in office 1792